Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint. In this video, we are going to be assembling, we're going to be building the Emperor's Champion, and that is from that new Black Templars army set that's just about to come out and is available for pre order. So let's just run through everything we're going to need in the video. You're going to need the sprue, which is the B sprue, which is this little teeny tiny one. I think all the pieces are on here. We'll double check in a minute. You're also going to need the instructions. That is what I'm going to be following. You can follow the video, but I would advise that you grab yourself the instructions and we're primarily going to be copying section two the emperor's champion there's not that many steps to it won't take too long i think it goes up here as well but basically put it on the base anyway we'll get to that shortly the next you're going to need the tools of the trade guys you are going to need some glue once you've cut the miniatures you're going to want to stick them together i'm now using citadel's plastic glue infinitely better than a bog standard super glue but guys if you do not have any plastic glue and you've got super glue just lying around and you test out the hobby don't worry it will work just fine but if you're ready to invest a little bit more money in something a lot lot better i would recommend some plastic glue i'm looking forward to trying out tamio's liquid cement that'll be next on my agenda to acquire you're also going to need some nippers now guys people have asked me many times why i use such expensive nippers let me just demonstrate i've not done this in a while i used to use super cheap nippers i actually thought they were fine they're like they did, they did the job let's just nip this sprue here and you can see you've got whiting all over did you hear the crack it kind of just suddenly snapped look at the damage it's done that's not a clean cut. Now, don't get me wrong. These are knackered now. So they, they, you know, demonstrate that very, very well. But I only used them for like half a year, a year, something like that. Um, so they didn't last long. I mean, they're only a dollar. What do you expect? Whereas these nice $20 nippers, you get nice, clean, barely made any sound, went through nice and smooth and got a clean cut. And that's, that's just my experience using expensive nippers so far. So I'm never going to go back. And my tools of trade, choice of the trade, choice of tools. Ta -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Can I even speak? And then my choice of nippers currently is the Citadel ones. Uh, I also really like the Redgrass Games ones. It's just not as long a point. So I find it harder to reach some of the pieces. You're going to need a craft knife. And this is for scraping any pieces that are left. You can use the back of the knife if yours is particularly sharp. Or if yours is blunt like mine, you can do it a little bit quicker using the front side. And yeah, it still doesn't, it doesn't get, because it's not sharp, it doesn't get caught in easily like that. I'd have to actually apply quite a lot of pressure. So you want a blunt knife to just smooth down some of the areas. And then if there's any really bad areas, you might want a small miniature file like the ones I use from Army Painter. So let's just crack on a build in this guy. Let's have a look. As I said, we'll follow the instructions. Let's have a look what we start with. So we want two A, these are just the instruction numbers, but you're gonna want these two numbers here, B1 and B2, as I said. At the start, this is sprue B. So we want one and two off of that, which are pretty easy to find. There's not too much on here, is there? So you want the big body piece, which is this piece, and then you're gonna want his thigh, which is up here. So we're just gonna nip those away. So the first thing we do, grab our nippers. I personally, and I say this in a lot of my assembly videos, I cut really close to the miniature. That leaves less work to do. It's also gonna make it a little bit more risky that I nip a bit of the miniature, maybe put a dint in it, something like that. So that's how I do it, nice and close. Not a lot to tidy up there, just smooth that over. Other people uh, may advise sort of cut it off the sprue and then you can work towards it which may or may not involve nipping closer and closer you might just want to file it down but i'm trying to work out what this piece is i had it upside down so you could nip away and then nip closer and closer or just file it down with a blade making sure you don't accidentally lose any limbs that sort of thing in fact this piece here is a good example this is really hard to reach so i'm going to nip it up all the way back here away from the sprue now i can get it nice and close and i can see what i'm doing so this is often a reason just to make two cuts one off the sprue and the one closer together like i might do here so we'll knit this away nice and clean there and then this big bit we can now sort of manipulate and see where we want to cut it and it looks like it should be flat along here can i get the nippers in not easily this is a this is a bit of a puzzle okay along here yeah, there we go. We can get in this angle. So if that helps at all, I'm going to go along here and you can see it's left a little bit that we're going to need to tidy up, but it's not too bad. It's not as close as I would normally like to get, but that's that's a good bit that we can just smooth down. While we're also nipping, let's just grab piece number two, which is, as I mentioned, this thigh up here, which is a single nip, just getting my nippers nice and close and snipping that away. For the next step, I'm going to take the blade. And as I mentioned at the prelude 
the intro to the video, the bit where I talked about the tools. I'm just going to use this just to smooth this down and I'm just going to run the blade along this bit of sprue that's still attached to his thigh. Uh, this still had a little bit of a chunky piece in it, so I needed a little bit of cutting there. And then again, you could use the file there instead or blade. And then I'm just going to smooth it down. I mentioned how I like to cut really close to the pieces so I don't have to do as much of this work. And then both of these pieces were ridiculously hard to get to, but that's it. That's now taken care of. We'll look at the actual body himself. There was three pieces on here, wasn't there? So you've got the shoulder. That's a little bit hard to work with, but it, it shouldn't be too bad. In fact, that's cut really, really well. I just need to, again, just scrape this over just lightly up here because I don't want to give him any flat spots on his rounded shoulder. So I'm just going to take my, my time and a little bit of care here just to make sure we take out any remaining rough bit there and and as i said that bit actually cut really close that's done really well once we've got some paint over that you won't see that anymore there's no dint then we also cut under this arm didn't we and there's a little bit of sprue left again so i'm just going to carefully use the blade and just slice that away that's now gone and then i'm going to scrape along could actually do with two blades i could do with a sharp one for nipping off any little bits of remaining sprue like that. And then this blunt one's great for scraping, but it's just sharp in places that I can just nip a little bit off. Then we've got the worst bit. Where was it? It was down here on his sort of, um, oh, it's his other leg, it's his other thigh. So once again, there's a bit of a bonus sprue still attached. So I'm just gonna carefully nip that away. Definitely want a sharp one here. I'm risking slipping because I'm having to apply so much pressure. So don't do me, do you. That should be a lot safer. But either way, that's come come away nicely there. So that's all smoothed over and that's all of those pieces taken care of. Just going to do a quick investigation, trying to see if there's any mold lines because this is a perfect time to tidy any of those up. I actually don't see any. No doubt eagle-eyed viewers out there will be able to see some and I'm just being blind. But I think that looks like a really well-produced model. Maybe there's a tiny little bit on his wrist just here. Clean the blade off. Just a tiny bit here, maybe. It could be part of his armor that I've just destroyed, but it looked like a bit of a mold line. But ultimately, that's really smooth, that's great. We're then just gonna to refer to the instruction manual again, and I noticed this, I'm learning every time. Guys, leave me comments below. If I, if I make any mistakes and you're more of a veteran builder than I am, let me know because it all helps. But what I noticed in one of my previous videos is the, the instructions actually show you where to put the glue. That's these yellow markers here. So you can see on, on this part of the miniature, it's advising putting it all the way around here. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll take the plastic glue. I'll go really high pitch while I hiccup. We'll then apply the plastic glue all the way around this ridge like that. We'll take his thigh, just work out which way around to put it. Oh, I wish I'd dry fit this first. Guys, dry fit this first so you get a feel for how it goes on, but it's definitely this way around. And then it must be like this. There we go. It wasn't, it wasn't too hard, but yeah, plastic glue is going to melt and join this together super quick. So it's, it'd be a great idea if you just try that <laughs> before you put the glue on. I just thought it was going to be obvious. And then it's like, it's not perfectly obvious. And there we go. We've got his leg attached. So we're going to move on to the next step here, which is his feet and his breastplate. So we want three five and six and it's going to be just repeating the process again we're going to find three on here which is this breastplate down here again i'm personally going to clip nice and close i just prefer to save some time three little quick cuts on that and the breastplate's free we want five and six as well which are both of his feet he's got this one here where he stood on the scenery let's free that up and then free up his other leg as well Now those pieces were all a lot easier to remove. This bit is not gonna be visible, is it? No, that's gonna go on the inside of his leg. I'll smooth it up just in case I'm wrong and that bit's happened to be sticking free. So I'll smooth this over, but this only had two sprue connections on it and one was underneath, who cares? That's gonna be glued down. We'll do his other leg again. One was underneath, who cares? We'll do this bit on his armor just in case his knee pads protruding from the rest of him, but it may well be just butted up against him. We'll see in a minute. If you see me glue this together and you can't see this bit, just save yourself some time. Don't bother filing it down. It's both his legs sorted. Oh, they stand up by themselves. Look at that, nice. And then his breastplate, it's just the same. Let's just find any little bits of sprue that didn't snip off cleanly. Although, again, this is just super tight, super clean. 
And then we'll just look back at how it recommends us gluing it. And don't follow this one, follow the one we're supposed to be following. So I'm going to do his legs. Should I do his armor first? I don't think it matters. Let's do his legs first because that's nice and easy. Get them out of the way with. So it looks like we're going to be applying glue. Which leg's which? So this is his left leg, which is on the right side for us. See, I'm going to try dry fitting it a little bit first. Just get a feel for how it goes together. You can see it's got a little, little triangle sort of notch ridge there and that slides into this little hole here so we just want to make sure that lines up there and that fits really snug so yeah we're good to go there i'm going to put some plastic glue particularly on that little triangular piece and all the way around his leg and then we're just going to push that back where we just tested dry fitting it and then his other leg goes on the other side would you believe it so it's just a matter of putting some glue on these pieces and as i predicted i don't think you needed to smooth down this bit because it's going to sit sort of flush against this guy's body the other piece is protruding though, so it's a good job I sorted that one out. So that fits sort of into his leg and resting against the back of, is it like his cape that's here? Oh, it does stick out a little bit. So file them both down if you want it to look amazing. So that's both his legs attached. So we just need to just work out where the armor is going to go exactly. That fits on so easily. You can't get this bit wrong. Let's just work out where to put the glue. And just work it out again. Double check. Better to check twice than glue twice and melt him all over the place. So here I am going to be putting some glue on the side of his belt over here, all along this ridge here, and then a little tiny bit, as little as possible as on these two bits of his collar where the top of the armor is going to attach. Then we're just going to slot that back in, pinch it together for a couple of seconds because this glue sets super fast or sets fast enough to let go. You do want to leave it for a bit of a longer period afterwards so it properly sets and that'll do. He's all headless, stands up by himself already. Next, we're going to be after his utility belt, his Batman utility belt. It looks pretty impressive. And that's over here, number, what number is it? Number four. Yes, I was going to say number five, but note down here, number four. We already did five. Again, cut it free, file it down, and then work out where to glue it. So it's a load of glue all over his bum. Again, let's just dry fit it, make sure we can work out exactly where this is going to click in. Uh, what? over here and then it's just working out where it goes again before we glue it in let's just give it a dry fit so this is gonna sit sort of around his side more than anything it fits in so the gun just slots in there against his armor so we're going to want to apply some glue i'm going to put it on his bum where it's going to sit and then i'm going to put a little bit on his armor so it holds there too and take that piece again and just Click him into place. Next up, let's build his helmet. We want ten, 9 and 10, 10 and 9, whichever way you want to say it. But let's grab 9 first because I can see it. And that's this little crown here. Again, let's nip it free. And his helmet as well, single snip. Now fitting the helmet, I've dry fitted it again here. You can see there's a lot of movement in it, but essentially we're going to want to push it in and lean it back super far so it sticks up like that. You can feel it sort of lock into that place, but that's what we're going to go for. Let's put some glue in the hole. You want to make sure you've got this the right way around, which is pointing up like this. And then you just got to get this little notch in that little hole. And like I said, push it in, lean it back. It's kind of going to lock into place and point upwards away from his head. Something like this looking spot on. Again, guys, if you're not making an assembly video and trying to assemble the whole thing, maybe this might be a time not to attach that sub-assembly, paint his helmet in position and leave the crown off and out of the way. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier for you. It's not gonna be impossible, don't get me wrong. That, that That's not gonna get in my way too much, but I might have to touch up that crown if I wanna paint it a different color. Just dry fitting his head in, and you can see that slots on there very easily in a specific position. So we'll just glue that in. Putting the glue on his neck ridge here, like that. And then just resting it in and finding the sweet spot. It's turned slightly and it locks into place. We want to find his hands next. That's number eight and number seven. So it's both hands. One of them's got a sword. That's a pretty easy hand to find. Let's just turn this over, make sure I've got good access, cut it nice and flush. And then his other hand's right in the middle, teeny tiny, just one nip. We'll attach his hands pretty easy. There's a big hole, big round bit here to put some glue into. And then we want to take his sword hand and it's nice and flat here on his sort of uh, wrist. So we're just going to pop that in that nice hole, make sure it's nice and straight. It's just kind of locked into position though. You can't really get this wrong. So that's pretty good. So then we could leave him just with one arm, just sort of Jamie Lannister him up. But other than wanting to do that, let's just put a stab of glue there 
and lock his other hand the hole onto the notch and just hold that tight into position and that's going to dry pretty quick and then we're already onto the back the last the final really it's only two instructions because this this is just He's done. This is him done. Tick. We need just his shoulder pads for this piece. There's so little left on the sprue now, it's, it's impossible to get this wrong. So let's attach on his right, which will be left facing it, shoulder pad. And that's a dab of glue on this little panel here. You're going to take the one without the bonus shield on, and you want it sort of upside down. And it's got a little hole in here, which we're going to try and lock into that panel. Now this bit is a bit wibbly wobbly, neither of the shoulder pads fit particularly snugly, but they go into place and I guess you're going to have slightly unique models depending exactly how well you've lined it up, or exactly how well the glue sets. So that was rubbish, let's try that again. So I've just twisted that a bit more round onto his face and it feels like it's touching a little bit more. We'll find out and see if the glue takes. Yeah, there we go. So that was on and I twisted it towards his face and that's just locked it in. Guys, it didn't do anything if the glue falls off it's not super glue it's not sticking to anything it needs plastic to stick to plastic so these things happen and then it's it's done now and again on his on his left which is your right facing it we just put some glue on his shoulder and again it doesn't have, seem to have a specific place to put it but i lock it on sort of here and just hold it in position if it sits that'll do if it doesn't we'll just adjust there we go that's set sit so i put the shield against his chest. I don't know what it's actually supposed to be mounted to. Is it supposed to be on his chest or is it off his arm or is it in between? Who knows, but that looks good. That looks well seated. Last but not least, we're gonna free up his, what even is this? I don't know what these are. Is it a jetpack? Is it a respirator for breathing? I don't know, but we'll relieve it of its sprue connections. That's the sprue completely finished. Last piece, very, very exciting. Again, guys, if you've not seen me filing these down and cleaning them up, I have been doing every single piece off camera. It's just boring. This one's particularly noticeable though. So I'll just remind us that we should be doing this, just smoothing down any of the bits of sprue that are remaining on it. Once that's looking bang tidy, we're gonna drop our glue and then we're gonna put some in this little crevice here. We're gonna then sit this on his back somewhere, which is, well, I wish we dry fit this first. Guys, dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. Just test them out. It, uh, it fits on easy peasy. Should it be at an angle or should it be straight? Slightly angled, I think. Looking like he's leaning. Hold that into position. And there we go. That's all set. We're going to need to find a base next. What size base? It will tell you. We want a 40 mil base. We need to find a 40 mil base. I didn't get them. What? What an amateur. So grabbing 140 mil base later. Guys, they are the medium base. They're not the big one, that's for the dreadnought. And they're not the small one, that's for the cannon fodder. This is for the leader or one of the main main duties. I don't even know what this guy's for, but I'm gonna attach some more plastic glue to his feet. And then we're gonna situate him on the base. I'm gonna go for, then you need to reattach that because that just fell off. But we're gonna go for about in the middle of this base somewhere here. So let's fix back on his rucksack. I'm going to get some glue down the edge of this little cut out here because that's the bit that seems to be hitting the miniature. So let's get some around the edge as well as on the inside. And then we can just simply pop that back on. And with that backpack completely reattached, we have finished assembling the Emperor's Champion. Guys, that was a very, very straightforward miniature to put together. The instructions were correct and well done, like spot on, I think. His backpack was slightly off. Maybe he should have shown gluing around the edge of that bit that sticks inside but other than that absolutely spot on really really easy to cut away from the sprue there was very few attachment points it made it super quick and super easy to do that was a great great miniatures to start building up that dark dark templar that black templar set if you've picked it up i'd start with this one it's it's a it's a good model so it's you know puts a smile on your face once it's built but it's a very simple model at the same time anyway guys that is as easy as that and um, let me know what you would like to see built next in the comments below. Thank you all ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. What's the guy's name? Mr. Rogers, how the fuck should I know? Ah, uh, with the box, Emperor's Champion. I'm gonna have to check, damn it. What's the guy's name?